The following tape was made at the Muskogee State Fairgrounds last week, last Wednesday, when former Governor Henry Bellman, the Republican candidate and incumbent U.S. Senator Mike Monroney, uh, met before the grandstand in a debate on the issues of the 1968 campaign for the U.S. Senate between these two candidates. Cam U.S. Radio, which uh, is the only station in eastern Oklahoma that covers the entire Muskogee trade territory, made this tape and was the only station that that uh, broadcasts regularly such events on the air. And we are happy to make this tape available to the Mike Monroney forces. Uh, in uh, as an information uh, item. Also, we'd like to remind the people in the Mike Monroney headquarters that KMUS, of course, will be happy to give special attention to any commercial spots that will be placed in eastern Oklahoma during the coming campaign. And we'd like to call attention to the fact that KMUS Radio is the only 1,000-watt full-time radio station in the eastern Oklahoma area, the most powerful voice of uh, this entire area. KMUS coverage area extends to the east, clear to Fort Smith, westward to Miami, Vanita, I mean northward to Miami and Vanita, and clear to Bartlesville covers the entire Tulsa area and uh, extends westward to Oklahoma City and southward to McAllister. So in buying commercial spots on KMUS radio, why you get a tremendous bonus coverage, which is actually a circle of 100 miles roughly in every direction from Muskogee. If, in case the Monroney people would like to have a seven and a half speed tape that would be useful uh, on uh, radio stations for any other purpose, we'd be glad to uh, make a broadcast quality copy if you will just let us know. This is Horace C. Boren, Post Office Box 128 at KMUS in Muskogee. Our telephone number is Murray 22488. James Keitel is the manager of KMUS Radio. And now we go to the broadcast of the Monroney Bellman debate at the Muskogee State Fair in September of 1968. much about the presidential candidates these days, but perhaps the most important race to those of us that live in Oklahoma is that for the United States Senate. We have with us this afternoon, I have to say, two of the three candidates. The American Party has a candidate who is not here, but uh, we have the Democratic candidate, the incumbent, and the Republican candidate, the challenger in the Senate race this afternoon. The coin has been tossed. Uh, each of these men will speak for 10 minutes to start with, and then we'll have a five-minute rebuttal following that from each one. As I said, the coin has been tossed. The first speaker will be the man who has the honor of being the first Republican governor of the state of Oklahoma, the man who now aspires to be the Republican United States Senator from Oklahoma, the Honorable Henry Bowden. President Nick, Stoney, Senator Monroney, friends, it's a real pleasure to be here at the Muskogee State Fair this afternoon and to have a chance to talk with you so that you'll all know the rules. Stoney's going to be standing out in front, and when he tells me to stop, i got to stop, or he's going to get a lariat rope and jerk me off of here. So we'll have to keep within the time limit that's set, which is, as he said, 10 minutes. 
Mr. Balloon was apologizing for the size of the crowd. I want to confess to all you folks that for Republican, this crowd looks mighty big. I, first time I had a meeting in some of the parts of the state about six, seven years ago, we used to get four people, and my wife and I'd be two. So you can see we look upon a crowd like this as a major event, and I'm very proud and pleased that you'd be here. Actually, I like very much to come to this part of the state. As most of you know, I'm a farmer from over in the short grass country, and the chance to get into the green lush section of Oklahoma where there's plenty of water and green grass is always an occasion for me. We've been having a little dry weather over where I live. I guess you'd like to see that here for the fair, and we are having a beautiful day here today. But I honestly believe that you folks who live here don't really appreciate the fantastic advantage you have as a result of the wonderful weather and the plentiful water that you more or less take for granted. Also, I'd like to say that it's a great pleasure to have a chance to come to a fair. Like most farm boys, I love fairs. Growing up on the farm, the chance to go to the fair was always sort of the highlight of the year. They always come at sort of after we get most of our work done, and I like to see the crowds and see what's going on. And so the chance to come here today and campaign a little is really a great pleasure. In a way, fairs are sort of like politics because fairs are for people. They're made up of people like Mr. Ballone and those who work with him. And they are always planned to attract people and to let people see the things that they want and have the kind of entertainment that they enjoy. Politics is also for people. It's of people and it's by people, and the fact that we have a campaign every two years or every four years simply gives people a chance to be sure that their government is doing for them the job they want done and the job that they're paying their taxes to have done. Fairs have long been a part of the Oklahoma tradition. All of you know that ours is a rural state, and while it's changing because our farms are getting larger and therefore we have fewer people on the farm, we still have a very strong rural tradition, and fairs are very much a part of this, and I'm sure they'll continue to do, to be. I want to say that the fact that our farms are getting larger and we have fewer people on, our, on the land has presented some major problems which our politicians and our government have the responsibility of solving. Most of you, if you came from rural backgrounds, will know how many people at one time lived on Oklahoma land, and you'll know today that many of these farmhouses are vacant or have been torn down and, or perhaps moved away. The fact that we no longer have the people on the land means that most of these folks have had to go into the cities looking for jobs, and if they couldn't find jobs in Oklahoma, They've had to go to Dallas or to Chicago or Los Angeles or Pittsburgh or someplace else in order to find a livelihood. To me, this is one of the real significant things that we are discussing in the campaign this year because the fact that we've lost so many people from the rural areas, not only of Oklahoma, but all across the Farm Belt, has contributed substantially to the difficulties that we see now in our cities because a lot of these rural people went into the cities without the kind of skills and the experience they needed to find good jobs in our factories and in industry. Our government was asleep at the time. They didn't make it possible for these people to get the kind of training and to make the adjustment that they needed. And also, our government did not offer the incentive that would have caused some of the industries to locate in the rural areas where the people had been living for generations. Only about 10 days ago, I was a member of a party that flew over Muskogee. Richard Nixon was coming to Oklahoma, and he wanted to see what was happening along the Arkansas Navigation Channel. So he arranged with his pilots to fly over the Arkansas, starting down at Fort Smith and followed clear up to along, along the Vertigris up to Catoosa, where the turnaround basin is going to be. And he did this because he expects to be, and I fully expect him to be, the next president of the United States. And in this capacity, he'll have a major role to play in whether or not we continue to get the funds required to keep the Arkansas on schedule. 
He was amazed and pleased to see the progress that's been made, and he assured those of us who were in the party of his intention to make certain that we continue to get the funds that this project will need to be completed in 1970. Now, to me, the important thing here is that the development of the Arkansas will, in, will do a great deal to make it possible for industry to come here and develop the jobs and the opportunities that our rural people need so that they can stay in the less congested areas of our country and live meaningful lives. Muskogee and eastern Oklahoma for over 30 years have been losing population. Now, within the next few years, there's every reason to believe that this trend is going to be reversed. In fact, many people who have studied the prospects and the future of this area believe that within a fairly short time, Muskogee will probably have a population in excess of 100,000 people due largely to the development that the Arkansas Navigation Channel will bring to this area. Now, to me, the significant thing about the Nixon visit here is that, again, assuming that he is the next president, our governor and others in our government are going to be able to assure the industries that are thinking about building plants here that we will have water transportation on schedule so that they can go ahead and make the preliminary plans they're going to need to have their industries in operation and ready to take advantage of the cheap freight rates when the time comes. Another significant thing is that after our present president was elected, he proposed to cut the appropriations for the Arkansas Navigation Channel by about $15 million, and this would have delayed the opening by at least a year. And had he gotten away with that cut and followed up by cuts in later years, it could have delayed the completion of this project for some time. So I'd like to suggest today to Senator Monroney, who's here, that he and other leaders of the Democratic Party make every possible e effort to get Hubert Humphrey to come to Oklahoma and look over the Arkansas and show him what's being done here and get his assurance that should the unexpected happen and Hubert Humphrey become the next president, that we'll have at least two of three of the candidates on the side of the Arkansas and in this way have at least two chances out of three of keeping this wonderful project right on schedule. I might say, and I don't want to get into too much controversy here this afternoon that the Arkansas project is just one of many, many issues that Senator Maroney and I have between us in this campaign. I've never been involved in the campaign when there's been so much uh, confusion and so, much, so many people upset. I frequently Tell, uh, try to describe this or sum it up by telling the story of a fellow who went to visit a silver fox farm and he was shown around to the places where they raised the foxes and showed how they were cared for and how the young ones were protected and finally was taken to the room where they processed the fur and this visitor turned to the farmer and said well tell me uh, how often do you skin these foxes well of course the farmer was amazed but he uh, thought over him and he said well I'll tell you we only skin them once more often makes them nervous. Well, to, to me, this kind of sums up what's going on this, this year. Our people are really genuinely nervous. They feel like they've been skinned by their government, and they don't intend to let it happen again. I'm not going to be able to go through the issues entirely, but I'd just like to mention the fact that we have a time now when we do not have the kind of law and order we need. The problem of the gun control law is a major issue. Those of you in agriculture will know that times are tough on the farms, that we're facing literally bankruptcy in many areas of agriculture, and this after almost two generations of controls and supports. We also have a war going on in Vietnam. We have increasing cost of living, and I believe that this is a year when we're going to have new leadership in Washington to help solve these problems, and I want to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Well, you caught me, Henry. You still had 20 seconds. Next to uh, make his opening uh, remarks is the man I'm sure needs no introduction to you, our senior United States senator, the Democratic incumbent, A.S. Mike Monroney. Thank you. President Nick, uh, <coughs> my 
dear friend Stoney, Governor Bellman, and my friends of Muskogee and southeastern Oklahoma, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to see this big a crowd because when I see this many Democrats turning out, as I think are here, uh, we know we can multiply them about on a factor of 100 for 1, and we'll have somewhere near the strength of the Democratic Party in eastern Oklahoma. I don't think Oklahoma is doing badly. I think we've even been able to withstand two Republican governors without sinking into the sea, which many of us thought we would perhaps do if we had one. And I'd like to assure my distinguished uh, opponent uh, that Mr. Humphrey has been over the Arkansas several times, and not when he was just running for office. He came to see what was going on, and he didn't come to make a few bounty points on a project that associated with President Eisenhower with uh, the Vice President Nixon, uh, the number two man, uh, had uh, put a No New Starts program in on all the Army engineers' projects. That meant that you couldn't break ground on any project, even though the Democratic Party had authorized it in 1946. And this went on until your Congressman Ed Edmondson with uh, Carl Albert and a number of others in the House uh, overrode uh, the White House and uh, the mighty uh, President Eisenhower and Vice President Nixon and voted the funds to start uh, the work on Lake Eufaula, which was the key project in the whole Arkansas project. And Bob Kerr and myself, because we were on Appropriations Committee uh, in the United States Senate, and that's a pretty important place to be on when you want public works, particularly if you're on the Public Works Subcommittee of that Appropriations Subcommittee, and so we uh, did manage to keep the money, put the money back in uh, against the wishes of the White House. And so any enthusiasm over the Arkansas uh, is a rather Johnny-come-lately, election is close, sort of a proposition on the part of uh, the vice pres former vice president. And may I say to you that uh, the work is within one year of completion, thanks to your Democratic Congresses and thanks to your Democratic representatives. And it's going to be a very great thing. Uh, this is one of the greatest, well, it is the greatest project ever built by the Corps of Army Engineers. While the Panama Canal cost $400 million, it was worth it as a great investment. This cost $1,400,000,000 when completed, and $1,200,000,000 is already uh, appropriated and now in work and will carry us through uh, the next fiscal year, to the next fiscal year. We need one more year in order to finish it and have it ready for the traffic that it will bear. I think few of you realize what's going to happen to eastern Oklahoma when this is open, because uh, this, this huge project uh, will not only serve this part of Oklahoma, but it will carry benefits to all Oklahoma, even Governor Bellman on his wheat farm, and now is profiting by six cents a bushel in freight rates to the Gulf of Mexico because of the water impelled rates that this canal has already bought, brought. And those rates have been approved by the ICC uh, at the request of the railroad so they can be competitive and will reach into all parts of the development. It will open the coal mines that have been uh, abandoned for years because eastern Oklahoma has the greatest supply of metallurgical coal, I think, in the whole world. And this canal, and I got the money this year for uh, the enlargement of uh, one of the wings of, of the lake uh, that will take navigation within 10 miles of two new modern mechanized mines where nobody works underground. They just keep the machinery repaired on top and a bit bores the coal and brings it up. Loaded into trucks and in 10 miles it's on the barge. Destined to the port of New Orleans or destined to the steel mills up in Gary, Indiana or in Pittsburgh because this waterway will be open at a rate that will give us the advantage over any other part of the United States. I said this cost $1,400,000,000. The canalization of the, Ar of the Ohio River uh, that goes from Cairo, Illinois, off the Mississippi, up the Ohio to Pittsburgh, uh, this only cost $800,000,000. And yet it brought about the creation of the greatest concentrated area of industrial development in the history of all mankind. But ours is going to be better because that's only open nine months of the year and ours is open 12 months of the year. We don't have ice to worry about and we'd be the northernmost tributary of it. And this means great employment opportunity 
for steel mills because we have metallurgical coal right at our back door. It means uh, great opportunities for young men to work in assembly plants, in fabricating plants, and all of these very, very many great things that are bound to come. And so I'm proud that at long last they flew over this great canal, this great navigation project. I understood they mistook a few lakes in Texas on their way up, the paper said. They didn't know when they were there. Uh, and figuring the speed of a jet, and I know something about that, 450 miles an hour, uh, you'd be over it. He said, there it is, wasn't it? And this is about the way uh, the survey went and the papers played up the great interest uh, that the candidate for the Republican Party had in the Arkansas. I'll admit it's an improvement because when Goldwater came four years ago to talk at Bartlesville, he said it was the biggest boondoggle in the history of the United States. So let's don't take away any of the great credit of Bob Kerr and Ed Edmondson, Carl Albert, yes, and Mike Monroney that have battled this thing through for the very many years because we know what it's going to do to the great economy of Oklahoma. We're going to quit exporting our people to the ghettos to be unhappy, to be troubled with racial problems and murder and crime, and we're going to have the type of industry here. And I've been glad to do something about that in bringing industry here. I haven't talked about it. The industry is there, and Oklahoma has risen to where aviation now is a bigger payroll than the oil industry. It's the number fourth aviation state in the United States, and our young men with their great skills trained in schools that are financed 50 percent in vocational schools by the federal government. So more of that needless spending we hear from the Republican side. They're trained for these skills and they go on the assembly line and on the production line and they make the airplanes of tomorrow, the jumbo jet. They're making the DC-10 and soon they'll be working on the supersonic airplane. And of the, two, of the, four, of the four stages of Apollo that's going to land a man on the moon in our space program uh, in the next year or year and a half, Two of these four are made in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by Oklahoma young men. And I'm proud of the record that we've had. And I'm proud to have a part in bringing that here. And I ask to be given a chance to bring some more industry here because we've just begun to show what America can do. We've just begun to show what Oklahoma can play in that bigger picture of America because we're not a dying country. We have problems. I've been there 30 years. And I've never seen a time when they haven't had problems. I remember the WPA, when college-educated men were standing in line all day for a job at $14 a week to get food for their hungry children. And when our young men were bumming back and forth across the country on the top of boxcars, we had the CCC for them. We had the WPA. We put people back to work. We got America on the move. And these young men of today, that were of that day, were in CCC went to the military and came out with captains, lieutenants, majors, colonel decorations on their chest. And they went in to head now the banks and the industries of Oklahoma. This is what America can do if we have the courage to face the future, if we have the courage to move ahead, if we have the courage to pay no attention to the prophets of gloom and doom, who decry government expenditures and then go out and clip the ribbons to dedicate these very projects that were paid for by government money. Yes, Oklahoma is on the move. And the only danger that we'll have in Oklahoma is to try to provide for a static economy, try to provide for a country that's not on the move, try to provide for a country that doesn't realize it must have investment. And as one of the last four states in the union, we need investment. And for every $2 that you send to Washington in your tax, every $1 that you send to Washington in your taxes, Two dollars come back to Oklahoma for investment in long-term public work. And so I say to you, we have nothing to be ashamed of. We are proud of the progress we've made, but you ain't seen nothing yet when you get this canal open, when you see the farming and the young people that are producing these great animals that I saw today, you'll realize what soil conservation, what the abolition of farm tenancy has meant, and what farm programs that are cursed and abused by farmers, sometimes themselves and by politicians mostly, have meant to increasing the standard of living through REA, through water, rural water supply, and all these things that also come from federal investment. We're not spending, we're investing in the future of Oklahoma so that Oklahoma can move ahead. Thank you. Well, we've got 16 seconds back from Mike, too. They're uh, both being very fine about the clock. Now for uh, five minutes of rebuttal, Mr. 
Mr. Bowman. Thank you, Stoney. I want to say that I was pleased to hear Senator Maroney recall a statement that was attributed to Barry Goldwater here some four years ago. I always have had doubts in my mind that he was carefully, was properly understood, but it causes me to look at some clippings I've been carrying around for some time, waiting for a chance to use them, because Barry Goldwater isn't the only person who's on record as having opposed the Arkansas. This clipping I have is taken from a story that was written, I believe, right here in Muskogee in 1950, when Senator Monroney was opposing Senator Thomas, who at that time was a senior United States senator, having served for 24 years in that capacity. And let me read, in talking about the Arkansas, what the reporter had to say. He said that Monroney argued that two floods would fill the proposed Arkansas River navigation channel with silt and you'll have lost your $825 million. He said the navigation proposal has nothing to do with flood control, that the floods Thomas has been able to get for Oklahoma over and above the amounts voted in the House have cost Oklahoma many tens of times for every appropriation he's been able to get for Oklahoma. The truth of it is, and I have other clippings along the same line, that in the beginning, up to 1955, Senator Monroney fought the Arkansas Navigation Channel with all the force he had in the, in the Congress. And if it hadn't been for his being overruled by a Republican administration, President Eisenhower, who, in, who was the one who was in the White House when this project started, there would never have been an Arkansas Navigation Channel. Senator Maroney was dead set against investing over here in this project. He's come to be for it since it's come to be popular. And if you had left it up to him, there would never have been the first spadeful of dirt moved and the flood control system, the navigation system, which is now just about a reality, would have remained a dream of people like Newt Graham and others who were farsighted enough to see the potential that this part of the country has. I'd like also to mention the fact that I have been one of those who knows the important role that transportation plays in community development. One of my major endeavors while I was in the governor's office was to help improve the transportation system of Oklahoma because I know that the movement of goods very frequently comes ahead of industrial development. We worked hard and long to clean up the problems in the state government so that our state would have courts that were honorable and so that justice could, would not be for sale. We worked to make certain that the tax dollars you sent to Oklahoma were being wisely and carefully and frugally spent. We worked every way we could to get a highway system for the state. And fortunately, Muskogee is one of the principal benefactors of our highway program. As you all know, this area has now come to be a major transportation hub for the state. And with the completion of the roads that are now in construction, you will have here one of the finest highway networks of any community on the face of the earth. So I'd like to identify myself as one of those who is a builder, who believes in Oklahoma, who knows the future that our state has, who knows that the job of government is to look ahead and not fight a project such as the Arkansas, but rather to look for other investments that are wise and are going to make it possible for our young people to stay here and live the kind of lives that they want to live. I know there are other projects of the magnitude of the Arkansas that will help us to harness our water, that will help us to take advantage of the wonderful climate, the other natural resources we have, and I believe that as a member of the United States Senate, working with the leaders in industry in the various communities around over the state, with leaders in state government, that I can have a major hand in helping to make Oklahoma bloom and grow and prosper the way we all want our state to do. I want to be sure the governor appreciate and knows how much I appreciate his talking about my position on the Arkansas. I represented a Western District for 12 years in the House. I had the great honor of uh, being called the big daddy of the little dams. I promoted soil conservation and the upstream flood control and the small dams. It was my hope that we could 
uh, stop our flood through adequate use of holding the water where it fell. I was largely successful in getting the dams. I was largely successful in promoting uh, the soil conservation and the water reserves on the farms. And when I came to the Senate, uh, Bob Kerr was the father of the big dams. I was the father of little dams. Bob Kerr is a pretty good guy to suggest a merger. And we both studied each other's program. He didn't like the small ones. I didn't like the big ones. Finally, we got together and had a merger. And so we uh, went together, the big dams and the little dams, and we got the best dam program in the whole United States, in Oklahoma. And I'm happy to have been able to carry this along. Uh, the business about Johnson holding up this money, uh, he held it up for a short time and called us down to the White House and released it uh, at the time to put it in full work so there was not a minute's delay and there wasn't any necessity for Congress overriding Johnson. Johnson made up his own mind, but Mr. Eisenhower didn't make up his own mind uh, and it had to be an override uh, by the Congress of the United States. I think we have a great opportunity uh, in trying to develop Oklahoma. What these young men that I saw with their purebred cattle, uh, years ago we had about 25% home ownership on the farms and 75% tenancy. Sharecroppers, uh, sharecroppers were everywhere. Something like the Okies of the Grapes of Wrath. But we came forward with a purchase plan under what is now the Farm Home Administration. And now it is just reversed. We have 75% ownership and less than 25% tenancy. Instead of having row crops, old weevils, uh, we have grass and we have wood and we have the rich pastures that these cattle that we see here grow on. We're moving up in agriculture. We have great wheat prospects and we're producing from areas because of government programs, because of irrigation, because of water loans for irrigation. Uh, we're farming bits of land and under soil conservation in the panhandle where people didn't think it would grow wheat. And we've become the second largest wheat producer in the nation because of government programs. And I can say today the price would be at least 25 cents higher on wheat if the bill that I introduced, sponsored, that was endorsed by every wheat council in the United States and every farm organization excepting the Farm Bureau, and they never endorse anything, uh, and uh, all of the uh, experts on wheat in the industry, and I called it up for passage on the uh, Farm Bill extension, and it was defeated. 26 to 1 Republicans voted not to give a nickel's worth of help in allowing the farmer to create a farm held reserve. And this is in the record and you can see it. It's the Democrats that move farms forward. It's the Democrats that move city forward. Yes, it's the Democrats that have faith in our young men on education. And without the $100 million that's plowed into Oklahoma education every year, we wouldn't have our schools open nine months of the year as we do now. This is partnership, constructive partnership with our states and with the people that are represented by those states. Thank you. I'll give you five minutes now for rebuttal. I'll tell you, as much time as i got left, I'm going to speak for five minutes. No, I'll give you two minutes. That's all right. You've talked enough. Uh, we're glad that... Uh, but everybody's for the Arkansas anyway right now. I'll tell you, it I think is the future of eastern Oklahoma. And I'd like to impress on everybody that the main turning basin ends here at Muskogee. After you get into the Vertigus, the channel narrows down to 150 feet. And it can't take those real big barges, but we hope you won't tell anybody up at Tulsa about it until it all gets ready. I'd like to uh, make a few introductions this time. Incidentally, Governor Bartlett, who had hoped to be here, uh, wound up with a conflicting engagement and sent his regrets. Congressman Ed Edmondson, the Democratic incumbent, also wired that he would be unable to be here today. He had to be in Congress. We do have the Republican candidate for Congress in the 2nd District, a man who has several labels, the doctor, a lawyer, retired Navy veteran, a veteran of Vietnam, <laughs> Mr. Robert Smith of Wagner County. I 
see a few uh, of our county officials we should introduce is Boyd Stevenson, who is the county chairman of the Democratic Party. Um, I'm sure Tom Mason, the uh, county chairman for the Republicans, is up there somewhere. Tom, there he is, back here. And uh, Norman Brazil, chairman of the Board of County Commissioners from Muskogee. And uh, Kenneth Ward was here. I don't know whether he's still there or not. I see County Treasurer uh, Oscar Thomas and County Assessor Ed Heifel, County Judge John Porter. Uh, he's County Judge now. He's running for uh, Associate District Judge. That's it, under the new court reform system. Not the one you voted on yesterday, but the one you voted on previously. Uh, I should say, of course, that John has an opponent, or do you? Jim Goodman? Are you both running for one or two? One position, all right. Jim Goodman, who is now special sessions judge. I don't uh, really see from this distance anyone else I should introduce. I know you're all uh, anxiously, uh, I beg your pardon. You got way off down there on me again. The Republican candidate for state corporation commissioner, the winner in yesterday's election, Mr. I.E. Chinoweth of Tulsa. Mr. Chenoweth will oppose uh, former Attorney General Charles Nesbitt, the Democrat in the November general election. Uh, I think that's it from here, ladies and gentlemen. I know you want to see the show that's uh, here, the stars of the Lawrence Welch show, Dick Dale and, uh, and Arthur Duncan, and we're going to put a stage out here for Arthur to dance on. Well, you've all seen him on television, I know, and uh, despite the small crowd, you're going to see a big show. And we hope you'll all tell everybody about it tonight so they will come back. And on behalf of the Muskogee State Fair, we thank uh, Senator Monroney and uh, Governor Bellman for being with us this afternoon and bringing these thought-provoking discussions to the voters. Right, there's Nat Ari. Nat Ari, stand up. They talked about Muskogee road system. I think Nat has done... I, marvelous is the word I use all the time. I, it's sort of superfluous, but uh, Matt knows how I feel, and I think he knows how the majority of people in eastern Oklahoma feel. You tired of listening to me? Fine stuff. Rival radio station won't even let me on the air. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and on with the show. Don't even know. it. This tape has been prepared for the Mike Monroney headquarters by KMUS Radio, Post Office Box 128 in Muskogee. For additional uh, tapes or for political spots, publicity releases, call Murray 22488 and the code in Muskogee 918. That's KMUS radio in Muskogee. KMUS radio is the only 1,000 watt full-time radio station in eastern Oklahoma and the predominant radio station in the area surrounding Muskogee for 100 miles in all directions. This is Horace C. Boren, owner of KMUS radio. The manager of KMUS is Jim Keitel and uh, we are happy to provide this tape as a public service for use by the Mike Monroney headquarters. <laughs>